Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. It's a Tuesday night for us. Wednesday morning for you guys. Uh, that means there's Bible study tonight at 7 o'clock. Every single Wednesday, we do Wednesday Bible study, worship, Bible study. We call it a teaching service. Mm -hmm. So that's the only time, guys, you can really be interactive with us because these devotionals are always pre-recorded. We pre-record them, and that way they can release at 3 in the morning. Why 3 in the morning? Because on the East Coast, it's 6 in the morning. That way they can have it as a morning devotional. And um, Sundays, I can't be interactive because usually I'm the one preaching, you know. But Wednesday is a good time to jump on. It's live. And um, we have, whether Sharon or Brother Johnny or somebody monitoring uh, your guys' comments, and it's the best time to be interactive, guys, so join us. Yes. Um, you know, <clears throat> um, it's a very sad day um, today for us because it's Tuesday with the shooting in Texas, you know, and, uh, you know, as believers, you know, I wanted to talk about that, and I wanted to show you a scripture, because, you know, <clears throat> just kind of watching some of the, a little bit of the news, actually, most, for the most part, I mean, there's some reporters that can barely even talk. Yeah. You know, um, I think there's a lot that can yeah. Barely even say anything. Yeah, but I did see a handful of people just making it political, guys. And now, there's a thing when you go to a cologne place that once you smell so many colognes, they have these coffee grounds that kind of neutralize to yeah. kind of set you back straight. To reset it. Yeah. And you guys have probably been drowning in this thing that happened and things are still finding out more children are dying, you know, because a lot of them got shot and they ended up passing away anyways. Before any of that, guys, so before, as believers, before we start laying blame on politics, on this, on that, I want to go back to the root of wickedness in this world. We can't forget that as believers. Yeah. You know, so I do want to talk about it, but I want to share this scripture with you guys and first, Peter. Let me grab my phone. Yeah. Sorry. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And it says this. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> First Peter 5, 8. Okay, guys, and I'll be reading out of the message. And mine's with 8 and 11. Yeah, so just do 8. Okay. It says, keep a cool head, stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and will like nothing better than to catch you napping. The next one, too. The next keep one. your guard up. You're not the only one who... The only ones plunged into these hard times. Amen. You know, it, it's easy to get upset. I mean, we're all upset, actually. We are upset. And, you know, I do get, I do, I'm, I'm, I'm a human. I get upset at people. Of course I do. Because we all make choices. We all have choices every single day. Uh, at a red light, I can choose to stop. Or I can choose to plow through and possibly kill somebody, you know? So, um, but at the same time, guys, you got to understand that there is a devil. He's been thrown down to this earth. He has a short time with great wrath, you know? And, and it says it right here in scripture. We always got to keep grounded in this, guys, because, you know, I was talking to my daughter, my oldest daughter, and I told her, I said, there is a devil, and someday he will bow. And someday the Bible promises that he will be cast into the lake of fire forever. Yeah. And I told her, I said, this demon, this Satan, hates our children, hates our families. Yeah. And wants to utterly destroy them. And this is why, guys, this is why we need to ground our children in the word and cover them in prayer. 
you know, because you just, you just never know, you know, and, and in retrospect, we can look back and we weren't there. We don't know the situation as, as the days go out, as the days pass, we're going to find out more and more information. You know, this, this man, you know, he killed his grandmother. He, he was in a shootout. It seems like before even the school, I mean, it's hard to say because we're over here. Yeah. You know, and, and I think as a day's roll, because I don't want to say nothing because this is brand new. So this more things are going to come out. But still, here's the thing, though. What what is true, in fact, is the tragedy is babies were lost. Yeah. And, and, innocent, and teachers, innocent children, innocent people and, and a young teacher. Yeah. You know, and, and you just like you just shake your head. What else can you do? But shake your head, you know, and, you know, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, there's so been, here's the thing, though, in world history, guys, tragedies didn't start when guns were made. Remember the time of Jesus? Herod sent people to kill all the babies two and under. Yeah. And there was wailing in the streets. Mothers, babies were ripped out of their hands. Boys, all boys two years and under were massacred. They didn't have guns. You know, when we were, and it's not the first time, but it's, it's, it's like when we go out there on Mondays to go evangelize and you get a lot of young people, a lot of, even our young adults. We've been spending a lot of time with our young adults, you know. And when we're out there evangelizing, we get a numerous amount of young adults to pass by. And some of them are with their windows open. And um, we get a chance to just say, you know, God bless you. God bless you. You know, and they don't even want to look at us. They don't even want to pay attention to us. And they, they have such, they're like so, there's so much anger in them, you know, and it's, it's like there's so much anger built up in them that they want to be left alone. There's a, a, a spirit of anger, you know, and it's almost like there's like hatred towards the things of God built up in them, that they want to be left alone, that yeah. they want nothing to do with the word of God. And, and you feel it and you feel that spirit. So, and, and it's like, my God, what has happened to our young people? They have been so, it's like desensitized. Calloused. Yeah, so callous and so desensitized, like technology and everything, the things that something has desensitized them so much. And it is, it's so crazy to me because I seen it so clear as night and day yesterday as I was out there evangelizing that I said it like four times to a young man and he just had this look of anger and no, just cold, cold, cold. And then another young man that kept going around, remember from, you know, light to light to light with just, you know, just desensitized, you know, and there's this, this anger in people. Rage. Rage, yeah. It's just rage for the things of God. And it's like, Lord, what, what is happening to this generation? And this is why, this is why when we went to Morro Bay with our young adults, this is why, why it was so important for us to, to go and spend time with our young people this is why we have to invest our time into our young people and our youth and our kids. Yeah. You know, because of, of, of things like this, because the enemy is just, he's on a rage to go devour our young people, even yeah. more so right now. Mm -hmm. All this new age stuff and everything it's like something is it's it they're it's becoming more of a trance that's be, that's getting them into a trance and it's become it's not it's not even it's almost like it's witchcraft something is happening you know yeah because i think that see 
when you have these conversations with people, they'll say, oh, it's because of police brutality, or they'll say because video games desensitize them, or they'll say because it's the movies, or they'll say because the rappers and, and the guns and all that. De- and, and here's the thing, though. If it's those things, what do you think is pulling the strings for those things? Yeah. And it comes back to the scripture yes. that we read, be sober. What does that mean? Be alert. Yes. Because when you're when you're not sober, um, you don't catch everything. No. So he says, be sober, be vigilant. What does that mean? Be looking around. Yeah. Be looking around. Guys, um, it's been, I'm 50 years old. It's been two decades since I gangbang. But we sit there at a taco truck and, and we're enjoying myself or whatever. I'm constantly vigilant. I'm looking to see who pulls up. I'm looking, you know. You just got to be. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, what does the adversary mean? Your opponent. Yeah. The one that hates you. Yeah. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he, whom he may devour. Looking in your neighborhood, in your city, looking in your schools, looking in your church, looking in your family, the enemy is like, mm, who can I devour? Who can I destroy? Yeah, and see, and these are the times, guys, where, you know, we need to be open to, um, we need to be open to to taking, you know, that spiritual correction out of out of love. We need to be open. If you have somebody that that is saying something out of love, if somebody that that loves you and is saying, listen use accountability, um, is speaking wisdom into your life and is trying to teach something to you, open up your spiritual ears, open up your spiritual eyes, open up your spiritual heart, listen to what it is that they're trying to tell you. Because it may be that they're trying to, it's because they've been there and they're trying to show you something. It's because maybe because the Lord has shown them something. You know, I praise God for, for those who, who are younger in Christ and, and, you know, and, and that when I say, listen, use some accountability, you know, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but you know what, use some accountability. And when they come back and you know what, you're right. Thank you so much. You know what, because it, it, it is wisdom instead of getting all in the flesh. And instead of saying, you know what, no, I'm not going to, you know, you can't tell me what to do. No, I can't tell you what to do. I will never tell you what to do because who am I? I'm nobody to tell you what to do, but I will say this, but you know what? I will share with you the wisdom that the Lord has imparted, you know, in me because I've been there. We've been there sometimes, you know, the Lord, the Lord has allowed us to go through some things sometimes. And you know what? And, and praise God that he's been able to, to teach us a few things, you know, and we don't want, you know, our, our young generation to go through some of this hard stuff. So that's that's what it's about. You know, we too glean from from those who who have wisdom as well. But man, you know, um our young generation don't grow callous. Do not grow callous to to the things of God. Open up your ears. Open up your heart. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, it's it's weird because I mean I remember, like, you know, back when I was younger, I mean, we could have been, we were very, we could be brutal to each other on the streets, um, but we still had respect. Yeah. Like, I remember seeing enemies at a gas station, and if they were with their mother, I let it go. I just kept moving. Because you don't disrespect somebody's mom. I remember... You know, being at a, I think it was a Kmart. I think it was a Kmart in Tracy, way before Walmart. And you see your enemy, and I got a couple homeboys with me. You don't say nothing because that person's with their mom or their kids or the grandpa or a abuelito or something. You have respect. And it's different now. Yeah. Now they'll gun you down and your grandpa, you know. And, and it's just this callousness that's has swept over the land. The hardening of hearts has swept over the land, you know? And and it is a cause of alarm, guys. 
you know, and, and, and I know in the, in the world, we're like, well, we got to make new laws. We got to do, no, we got to get on our faces and, and humble ourselves unto God because he's the only one that can fix it. But you know what? According to the word, it's going to get worse. Yeah. That's the fact. It's going to get worse, which is why the urgency should be there to reach the lost for Jesus, to pray and lay hands on our children and on our grandchildren, to cover them in prayer, to, to show them a Christian life, to teach them about Jesus. This is why it is crucial at the 11th hour. You know, because of things like this, you know, America, I think the world is heartbroken. You know, anytime, man, and, and it's not even just because it's America. Anytime you hear of something happening to, to children, even when it's children in the Middle East, you haven't seen those videos where there's bombings and you see the people screaming in the streets with and holding their babies. Yeah. That's, that is not of God. Yeah, it's not a time to to bring up political movements and to to make a make a move on 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 any of that. It's not about that. It's about it's a spiritual it's a spiritual war. Yeah, you guys have to understand that it's a spiritual warfare, and we have to battle on our knees, and we have to battle in prayer. And we got to be bold. We have to be bold. Scripture says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities in high places. Yes. The Bible also says that we tear down the stronghold of the enemy. Yeah. You know, so like, you know, again, I go back to the words that this says, be sober and be vigilant. Be sober, be vigilant. To be sober is to be of your right mind because you can't be vigilant unless you're sober. You know, that's, that is that is a, a, a core scripture of why you should not be high on drugs, why you should not be drunk on wine, why you should not be, you know, intoxicated or, or overtaking your prescription medicine, because if you are not sober, then you will not be vigilant. And if you're not vigilant, you'll get caught slipping. And the enemy is looking for the one that is not sober and not vigilant. Yeah, that's right. And we have to be sober and vigilant, guys. We have to be on top of these things. We have to protect our families. We have to protect our children. We have to pray over our neighborhoods. You know, when you guys, let's make this promise that every single time we pass by a school. Yes. <laughs> to pray. Yeah. Be like, Lord. As I'm passing this place, Lord, surround this place with angels and protect this place, Lord, in Jesus' name. Look how long that took. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out prayer. The Lord, um, you don't have to repeat it over and over. The Lord is not deaf. He can hear you. He comprehends you. You know, and can you imagine if we covered our schools in prayer? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit further. And mothers, there's a lot of you mothers that, you know, come together and, you know, um, take your kids to school in the mornings before you leave that school, you know, gather in a circle with some of the other mothers before you leave that premise. And you know what? And begin to cover that school in prayer every morning before you leave. Begin to cover that school. And if somebody tries to say, you can't do that here, no, you say, yes, I can do that here. Because you have every freedom and every right to pray over that school. Nobody can tell you that you cannot pray, that you don't have the liberty and the freedom to pray over that school. Yes, you do. And you pray over that school. Yeah, right. You know, when we leave here, because we always usually go to Dutch Brothers, there's a school between us and Dutch Brothers just a few blocks away. And what, are, what did I say when, like, when, when the... When the um, the whole COVID thing started lifting and we saw the kids yeah, playing. Yeah, it, it just felt so beautiful for us to see the children and once again and hear them. We literally, for a moment, we drove so slow 
because we just love the sound of the children once again playing out there. Running and playing and we were just and like, screaming. Lord, thank you for, for having these children once again out there, for being out there, for the sound of children. You know, it's such a beautiful mm -hmm. sound to hear our children once again playing. We, we love to just sit there and listen to them at the parks and everywhere being children. That's you know, what happens when your own kids grow up, guys. <laughs> yeah, the, the, we, yeah, we just love it. It's like, you know, it's a beautiful thing. So, but now, from now on, I promise you, I, I promise you, Sharon, that when we pass by, not only, not only that school, but any school, that we are going to whisper a prayer to cover our schools. Because if the church don't do it, nobody's going to do it. Yeah. You know, and every time we pass on our way to get Dutch Brothers, we're just going to pray, you know, because, man, I remember back in the 80s, um, here in Stockton, actually, that's why they banned the AK-47, was because some guy came onto a school ground and massacred a bunch of little Asian kids because he was, I think he was a Vietnam vet or something. Something, something I can't remember, so don't quote me on this, um, but he had a prejudice against Vietnamese. And there was a, a school slash church. We pass by it a lot over here. When we go get that $10, that happened in the San Fernando $10 Valley meat as well. plate. Mm -hmm. And somebody with an AK-47 massacred. Um, if I find it, maybe I'll screenshot it and put it on here. But if, yeah. if not, then I didn't find it. But That happened in the San Fernando Valley as well. So this is a post office worker. Yeah, this isn't something new. This has happened, guys. Those of you that are younger and watching this. This happened when we were younger. There's been shootings and massacres. I remember seeing um, President Reagan um, assassination attempt. I remember seeing him get shot live on TV because he was coming out of this building and somebody came and shot him, shot one of the guys next to him. Somebody died. Uh, some of you that are even older than me, I was too young, but I remember when Kennedy was assassinated. I mean... Tragedies have, have always happened and been there. You know, I do want to say this too, is that here's another thing is that horrible things have always happened, but because of internet, it, it's, it's more easily shared. Yeah. You know, because I remember like family would visit from Texas when I was a kid and I'd be like, oh yeah, this happened here and this happened here. Like, oh man, we didn't, that never came on the news over here. Yeah. And then we would tell them stuff that happened here. But now it's like, boom, something happens in China and we know about it, you know? But anyways, guys, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Keep that to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So the true enemy is uh, it's a spiritual battle. Yeah. And let's so. continue to, um, to pray for each and every one of those families. Um, for those who are, you know, for those who lost a, a family member and for those who are recovering. Another one? Oh, you found it? And for those who are recovering in the hospital as Here well. Here it is. A deranged white man aimed his bullets at Asians. The urgent lesson of 1989 Stockton Massacre. A man and two students at Cleveland Elementary School in Stockton, after a heavily armed gunman invaded the schoolyard, killed five children and injured 30 others before killing himself. Look at that. It was in LA Times, but it was here in Stockton. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Those of you that have children, pray over your children every night, every morning. Yeah. Embrace them, hug them, love them. You know, because life is not promise. You know, and, and those that you love, let them know you love them. Pick up that phone. If you, if you have somebody that you love in your life, whether it's your sister, your brother, your mom, your aunt, your, call them. Call them today and tell them how much you love them and how much they mean to you. Yeah. Let's close it out in prayer, yeah? Yeah. Go ahead. Lord God, we pray for all the families that are affected by this, not only the families of the children and the teacher that was slain, but also all of the families, Lord yes. God, because so many children saw their friends die, Lord God. Yes. We pray for the entire city, the entire state of Texas. We pray for our nation, God. Yes. 
We submit ourselves unto you, Lord, because ultimately, Lord God, you are the one with wisdom. You are the one that can bring the answers. You're the one that can bring peace, Lord God. And we know that as times get worse, Lord God, we still cover our families and our children. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you are faithful, Lord. I pray for every single person that is watching this. Yes. Those of you that are watching, I we pray for your children yes. specifically in the name of Jesus. All the way from California to Boston to New York, we yes. pray for your children. Adam, we pray for your, your daughter, Lord God. We pray for all of your children that are listening and watching this, even those that are not in the United States. Cover them, Lord God. They are, they, are, they are innocent hearts, Lord God. Yes. And we pray, Lord God, that angels surround them, Lord God. And not only them, but their friends, their schoolmates, their entire school. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right, guys. God, God bless, bless you. you guys. Tonight, Bible study, 7 o'clock. And uh, thank you so much. And have a great day. Bye, guys. We love you.